let us read the problem first there is a spherical ball of mass 20 kg at rest on top of a hill which is at a height of 100 meters and from there it rolls down a smooth surface to the ground climbs up another hill to 30 meters and finally rolls down to a horizontal base which is 20 meters above the ground find the velocity attained by the ball when it is on the base finally Okay, so the significance of this problem is, see the, the only force, it's a smooth surface everywhere, huh? there is no friction. So the only force which is acting on the body during its journey is the gravitational force, right? Because the normal reaction which will be acting on the surface will be perpendicular to the surface always. The normal reaction, sorry, due to the surface which will be acting on the body will always be perpendicular to the surface. And therefore, the work done by the normal reaction is going to be 0. Angle is going to be 90 because the displacement of the body is always going to be along the surface and normal reaction is going to be perpendicular to surface. Therefore, the work done by the normal reaction is going to be 0. There is no friction. Now, the only force which is left behind is mg and fortunately mg is a conservative force. So, the path is not at all important. What is important is only the end points. Where was the ball initially? Where is going to be the ball finally? And the work done should be equal to change in kinetic energy. So, I will write the work done by the gravitational force. So, it is mg, the gravitational force into the displacement that it has gone in the, undergone in the vertical direction. So, it was at a height of 100 meters and finally, it is at a height of 20 meters above the ground. See, originally it was at a height of 100 meters and after having come down several times, it has finally landed on the base which is at a height of 20 meters above the ground. So, 100 minus 20. So, it has descended through what height? 80 meters. So, what is the work done by the gravitational force? mg into 80 and that is positive and there are no other forces which have worked on the particle. So, this force, now this work done should be equal to change in the kinetic energy and change is final minus initial. So, final is going to be written as half mv square and initial was 0 because the particle had started from the rest. So, m gets cancelled and you can calculate v square from this particular expression. So, how do you calculate? V square will be equal to uh, 1600. See, 80 into 2 is 160, 160 into 10 is 1600. So, V is going to be equal to 40 meters per second. And so, that makes the correct option as A. There is one more problem here which is just similar to the one that we have solved previously. There we were referring to conservative force and its nature and its uh, non-dependence on the path followed by the particle and all that. So here is one more problem of the same type. Let me read it for you first. Appears to be very complicated but it is very simple. A small block of mass m is released from the height of h uh, taken from the uh, surface a b. These are the two curved portions which are smooth and AB itself is rough uh, and the coefficient of friction is given to be mu. See these two are the curved portions which are smooth and AB is rough with the coefficient of friction given to be mu. The block slides down from here, moves on the part AB and then because it is left with some more amount of energy, it climbs on the second curved portion. So, it comes down from here, moves along the surface AB, loses a part of its energy. Why does it lose a part of its energy there? Because the surface is rough and if the surface is rough, naturally the energy is going to be lost. So, it is still left with some amount of energy because of which it climbs. We do not mean to say that it climbs to the same level and it cannot be also because it has already lost a small amount of energy on moving through the surface AB. Therefore, it climbs to a particular height and then comes back from there, moves on the surface BA once again and then again continues to move back and forth like this. 
climbs on the curves portion on the other side, slides down, moves on the part VA once again and then climbs and this is repeated enough number of times before it stops finally somewhere. So when, do, when does it stop finally? Only when it has lost all the energy that it once had in coming down from a height of H. And which are the forces which have worked on the particle? One is the gravitational force and second is the friction. So I will write the work done by both of them and equate it to change in the kinetic energy. And when I say change in the kinetic energy, final minus initial. So final is going to be 0 because you say it is going to stop somewhere and initial is going to be 0 because you had released it from rest. So I will write work done by all the forces equal to change in the kinetic energy. So one of the forces which has acted on the particle is gravitational force and that is independent of the path followed. So it was here and finally it has landed on the horizontal portion AB. I hope you agree here that the particle finally cannot come to rest anywhere on the curved portion because they are smooth. So finally it has to come to rest on the flat portion AB itself. So it was originally here at a height of H from the AB portion and finally is lying on the AB portion. So what is the vertical displacement that the body has undergone from its initial position to final position is H. Therefore MGH is the work done by the gravitational force and that is positive. Now the work done by the frictional force. See if this distance from A to B is L, right? and it has moved say n number of times from A to B, B to A, A to B like this and finally it has stopped somewhere. So I will write work done equal to work done by the kinetic friction equal to minus mu where mu is the coefficient of friction and n, n is mg. So minus mu mg into right say nl. And L, where N is the number of times it must have moved on AB. Initially it went from A to B, then came back from B to A again, fine, and then it must have gone again, it must have come back again. So I have assumed that it has made this journey N number of times. And finally, say it stops here at a distance of X. It stops here at a distance of X. So I will write NL plus X. So n number of times plus x again. So this should be equal to change in kinetic energy which is 0. right? So it should be equal to 0 that is the change in the kinetic energy. Now if you solve this mg gets cancelled and you have nl plus x into mu is equal to h. So nl plus x is equal to h by mu. NL plus X is equal to H by mu and X equal to H by mu minus NL. So that is going to be the answer. The question was where does it stop finally from the point A? So it has stopped finally from the point A at a distance of X and that X is this. So it depends on how much energy it had originally and how many trips does it make on the flat portion AB. So one more beautiful problem on work energy power, of course connected with simple harmonic motion. The potential energy function for a particle executing SHM is V of x equal to kx square divided by 2 and k is 0.5. The particle turns back at x equal to plus or minus 2 meters. So that is where uh, the velocity of the particle executing SHM will become 0 and the particle will return back towards the mean position. So you can call those to be the extreme positions, plus 2 is one extreme, minus 2 is another extreme. Then the total energy of the particle is asked. And what do you mean by total energy? Potential energy plus kinetic energy, right? But uh, we will have to first find out where is the mean position and what exactly is the energy at the mean position. At the mean position, the energy can be partially potential and partially kinetic. What I mean is, 
you need not be under the impression that at the mean position the potential energy has to be always zero. No, because potential energy is always uh, a matter of choice of the frame of reference. Therefore, the potential energy at the mean position could be zero, it could be negative, it could be positive. Therefore, taking for granted that the potential energy at the mean position is all time zero would be wrong in some of the very good problems. Right? So, give a liberty there that it can be positive, negative or zero. So, what we will do is we will first try to find out where is the mean position and what exactly is the energy at the mean position. How do you do that? You have been given the expression for the potential energy and you can find out the expression for the force because there is a definite relationship between force and potential energy F equal to minus du by dx. So, I will differentiate this with respect to x, x is the variable. So, I will get 2 kx by 2 which is nothing but kx. So, the force will be minus kx, f equal to minus du by dx remember. So, f equal to minus kx. So, if this is the force and I am talking about the mean position, the definition of the mean position is it is a position where the force is 0, force responsible for SHM is 0. Therefore, the force responsible for SHM is 0 at x equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to 0 is the mean position. Once you know the mean position, you can substitute the coordinates of the mean position in the function for potential energy and find out the corresponding potential energy. What are you going to get? The potential energy at x equal to 0 will be of course 0. Fine. Okay. So, now when the particle reaches this extreme, let us find out what exactly is the potential energy and call that energy itself to be the total energy. Because I hope you agree that at the extreme position the velocity will have become 0 and there will be no kinetic energy associated with the particle. So, all the energy that it has at the extreme position is entirely potential and the total because mean position energy is 0. So, I will put x equal to plus 2 in this and get the total uh, energy. So, total energy E is the value of k is 0.5 divided by 2 into 2 square. Right? So, 1 2 gets cancelled and you get 1. So, 1 joule is the total energy of this particle. So, that makes your option C as perfectly correct. So, there is a beautiful problem here again associated with the conservative force as well as potential energy and please remember F equals minus du by dr is the relationship between the conservative force and the change in the potential energy or you can say negative of the potential gradient fine. So, if you are given one you can always find out the other. Here he says the potential energy function associated with the force is to be found. So, he has given you the force and he wants you to write down the expression for the potential energy and I said what exactly is the relation F equal to minus du by dr or uh, du by dr is minus F or du equals minus F dot dr. F equals minus du by dr or du by dr is minus F or du is minus F dot dr. So, that makes it du equal to minus and f is 4 x y i cap plus 2 x square j cap this is the value of f that he has given and instead of dr I will write dx i cap plus dy j cap because the function for the force is only in two dimension, I have taken the dr also in only two dimensions dx i cap plus dy j cap or else I would have written this dr in three dimension as dx i cap plus dy j cap plus dz k cap. Okay. So, now if you take the dot product, you get minus 4 x y dx plus 2 x square dy fine. So, this is all du. So, du is this. Now, in order to find out u, you will have to integrate on both the sides. 
and when you integrate the limits are important that is from one position to another position and at the initial position what is the potential energy that you are going to take is not decided please remember this here you are going to substitute the limits initial to final and what exactly is your reference or initial point and what is the potential energy there are you going to take is not known so our answer will not be concrete like the first option straight away is wrong the options have to be plus constant fine we are going to decide between this and this certainly not this one because here the potential energy appears to be very concrete and that is not possible or whenever you speak about absolute potential energy take it for granted that there is no concrete value for the absolute potential energy whatever you say may be correct because it all depends on the choice of your frame of reference and what potential energy have you assigned for that frame of reference anyway so now i am going to integrate on both the sides but the difficulty is integrating this expression would be very very difficult and for that there is one simple method that is if this is a derivative of some function then definitely an integration of this will directly turn out to be that function itself what i said was if this thing that you are written in the bracket is a derivative of some function then integration of that derivative will directly lead to that function and fortunately this thing in the bracket is a derivative of 2x square y see because if you differentiate this 2x square y you are first going to differentiate 2x square assuming y to be constant which leads to 4xy and then you are going to keep 2x square as it is and you are going to differentiate y with respect to y that gives you only 2x square fine so if you differentiate with respect to x assuming y constant you will get the first term and if you differentiate with respect to y assuming x constant you will get 2x square fine so this function is a derivative of that so you can write this as minus of this so uh, u2 minus u1 say i am going to integrate this from 1 to 2 so u2 minus u1 is after having integrated it is only minus of 2x square y so u2 will be that is the potential energy at the final position will be minus 2x square y plus u1 or you can call minus 2x square y plus some constant so that makes your option b perfectly correct and i hope you thoroughly enjoyed this problem remember that absolute potential energy always depends upon the choice of the frame of reference as well as the potential energy that you have assigned for the reference so there is no concrete value of the absolute potential energy so this answer is ruled out right this is wrong because he has forgotten that minus sign there so this is perfectly correct and this is the constant which only gives you a scope for assigning any potential energy for your reference and this being a direct derivative of this function an integration has led to only 2x square y i hope you got this